Carson, after uh, the disappointment that was last season, how um, eager were you to get back on the field uh, last week? Yeah, I mean, for us, it was really exciting, um, especially with, uh, you know, obviously the new, new manager coming in, the, the prospect of, uh, you know, building something new, um, all that kind of stuff, and kind of put last season behind us because, uh, like you said, it was real disappointing for us, um, you know, and so far, so it's been really good. And, uh, you know, it's just nice to see the guys again, nice to be around the place. So, yeah, it's been great. Emerson, what were your first impressions of Einze? And uh, how did he kind of introduce himself to you all? What was the first day like? Uh, it was a tough day, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, he introduced himself like that. He, he made us work hard. And, um, you know, we didn't expect anything less. You know, we, uh, we had a tough time last year. And, um, you know, uh, he, we expect him to come in and um, tell us what he wanted us to do and uh, be very direct. And that's exactly what he's done. And, um, you know, he has, he has great ideas on how to play, play the game. And, um, you know, I think so far we're learning, you know, quite a bit in a short space of time. And, uh, you know, that can only be good for us in the future. Hey, Emerson, have you, have you noticed like an uptick in the intensity in training and perhaps compared to the last few seasons that you were here in Atlanta? Is, is that kind of been part of the, the initiation phase under Hainsen? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, the way he, he wants to play, it definitely requires, hard, you know, hard work and, uh, and a lot of fitness. So, um, you know, a lot of the things we've been doing is very, um, are very um, tough physically as well as mentally. So, um, you know, it's all about just, you know, staying concentrated, knowing that it's, you know, um, you know, for the long run, it's going to help you. And, uh, you know, it's exciting. And he wants to play a very, uh, you know, on the front, you know, on the front foot type, type of game. So, um, everything we do, we kind of have that in our mind of, you know, this is going to make us better. So, um, you know, it's, it's been tough, but, you know, we know it's going to uh, be good for us in the long run. Emerson, there's been a lot of new signings this year, uh, especially in midfield where you play. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed kind of like an increased level of kind of competition in training for to grab those spots? Yeah, of course. It's like that every year, you know, you got uh, new players coming in, you know, players leaving, obviously. And, um, you know, obviously for everyone, it's a chance uh, under a new manager to make an impression, you know, um, regardless of if you're new or not new. And, um, you know, I think it obviously uh, the first first week of preseason is always going to be everyone's trying to show what they can do. And, um, you know, obviously intensity has been very, very high uh, for that reason. So, um, you know, it's, it's exciting to see the, the level of players that are coming in and, uh, you know, they can only really help us, uh, which is which is good for us. Emerson, where have you, I mean, we talk about this a lot just because, you know, you're a versatile player. You can kind of play throughout whether you're closer to the to the strikers or are you starting in wide. What has that been like in the, these first few weeks of training? Where do you see yourself perhaps starting the season in, in what specific role? Uh, well, I think the, the big change is, like you said, I've, I've played kind of uh, in a few different positions uh, over my career, really, um, out wide and in the middle. But uh, the nice thing about it is, you know, he caught up with me, um, the, the manager, and he kind of told me where he wanted me to play um, and had very, very specific spots on that. And, um, you know, for me, it's kind of comforting knowing, OK, this is going to be my position um, in the long run. I don't have to worry about really, you know, chopping and changing. I can really focus on one spot, um, which um, hasn't really been the case for me since I've been here. So it's been kind of uh, moving around a little bit. Um, and I'm, I think, you know, he's, he's told uh, other players the exact same thing, you know, their role, what he wants uh, from them, things like that. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, I see myself as a center midfielder and uh, he does too. So um, for me, that's very comforting and I can just kind of focus on that. Can you go further with that? Can you tell us a little bit more about exactly what the spot is and exactly what kind of role he kind of sees you playing? Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, you know, he kind of plays with, uh, he likes to play three in the middle really. And, um, you know, he kind of sticks with that and, uh, you know, it's good that he has a style. We don't really have to chop and change too much in the middle. Um, you know, for uh, for where he kind of sees me playing, it's uh, a little bit more attacking, but he also wants us to link play. So it's uh, kind of like an eight roll, I guess, um, kind of a little bit box to box, um, kind of up and down. But, um, you know, for me, I, I feel like that kind of uh, is uh, well suited to me. And, um, you know, obviously he's going to help help uh, improve me as a player in, in numerous ways, especially defensively. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to kind of 
you know, learn that position the way he wants to play it and, uh, and hope they get off to a good start. Ever so has the team come together and kind of talked about what the goals are for this season in general? Obviously, you know, when you have a new coach, you can, there's can be some growing pains, you know, getting the tactics right and everything. Have you talked about what your expectations are? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, he wants, uh, you know, the managers come in and he wants to implement what he wants from the team first off. Um, you know, there's a lot to learn. And, uh, you know, he said it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to him and, and the way he wants to play because it's, uh, it's a very intricate and very, obviously, it's a, it's a very good way of playing, but it takes a little bit of time to learn. Um, so, you know, being in Atlanta, I mean, our, our goal is to always win things. You know, we know that it's a, it's a club that's always striving for the best. So, um, I don't think our attitude changes. Obviously, we had a tough time last year, but um, but you know that that stuff can happen from from time to time. But um, in the back of our heads, we you know we know we want to win things, and uh, you know I think the way we're working, the way we're uh, performing out in the pitch and working hard for each other, I think uh, everyone has the same goal in mind anyway. How beneficial is it? I think this is the longest preseason the team has had before it plays its first game, mm -hmm. and I know I think Frank. Uh, that, you know, he was concerned about that the previous two years. That it was so short before Champions League. Mm -hmm. how, how beneficial is that for you? Yeah, it's huge for us because, uh, you know, it just gives us more time, uh, especially with a new manager, to figure, figure each other out. And, uh, you know, we can implement things and, and learn things uh, at, a, at a slower pace, which sometimes helps, especially – the intricacy he wants to play with and uh sometimes the risk you know is it's like a risk reward thing the way the way we're, we want to play um and obviously the more reward you can get from the risk you risky play with it's it's going to help uh the more time you have working on it so um you know i think it's going to be huge for us to really learn week by week and the more weeks we have the better we're going to get i think and is there uh do y'all are y'all glad that the team is staying in Atlanta for the entire preseason, not going to Charleston or IMG or Fortune, any other places that it's been before? Yeah, obviously it's uh, it's the first I've, I've done it, you know, really just staying in one place. But uh, I think for us, it's just the focus part. You know, I mean, we're obviously, it's, it's kind of nice to be at home uh, regardless of if we're in a hotel or whatever. And we get to go to the, you know, we're close to everything, close to the field still, still feels uh, like we're at home. Um, you know, it's, it's really not too much different. I mean, if we traveled somewhere else, we'd be in a hotel, same, same thing. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a little bit different in terms of just the normalcy of it, but um, I th we, we get the same work done anyway. So it's not going to be much different. So y'all are in a hotel? Yeah, yeah. At, at, oh. at the moment. Well, I hope you're getting points for the, uh, for the stay. <laughs> um, how's Joseph looked? Uh, Carlos talked a little bit about it last week. Um, but I'm more curious in a player's perspective. Yeah, yeah, he's looked he's looked very good. You know, he's uh, he, he worked really hard to come back, and you know, he was obviously in the gym a lot of, a lot of last year and doing his own thing. And uh, you know, we obviously missed him a lot, um, having him up front scoring goals for us. So it's nice to see him back on the field. He looks sharp. He's uh, looks like he's getting fitter every day. Um, and yeah, he's he's out there doing what everyone else is doing now, which is which is great to see. And uh, you know, we can. We can definitely bank on him uh, being there for us uh, probably first game of the season. I'm sure y'all talked about it and thought about it. Would the team have made the playoffs last year if Joseph had not gotten injured? I mean, yeah, you can always you can always say uh, there was definitely a possibility of that just because he brings so much to the team, brings goals, brings uh, brings a lot of attention to you know the opposing center backs whoever we're playing. Um, but yeah, it's it, it was it was just a difficult all around season last year. There was a lot of things going on. Obviously, uh, it was it was difficult in all in all areas. Um, but you know, it's that could have been potential uh, for us to obviously score more goals, be more of a threat at times, and especially certain games where we kind of struggled with our finishing. But um, but no, we're just looking forward to having him back, and and you know, obviously, we want to be stronger and uh, this year, and having him in the team is definitely going to make us stronger. Emerson, I've got a couple of questions. Um, first of all, did you say, are you staying in a hotel or are all the players are staying in a hotel right now? Uh, at the minute we're staying in a hotel. We're all, you know, right next to the training ground. Um, you know, we're obviously it's preseason, so uh, it's not supposed to be fun. We're, we're putting in the hard work and, um, but yeah, it's uh, no issue for us. It's, we would be doing it wherever we went anyway. So, um, 
you know, for us, it's just uh, another day at the office. We're just, uh, you know, we're doing double days and stuff like that. So don't spend much time in here anyway, but it's been great so far. And then um, what has the communication like been with, with Hainsey and his staff? I mean, he, he's gone on record to say like, he's, he thinks his English isn't great, but clearly he does speak a little bit of English. Um, what has that been like, that dynamic in training, getting instructions from him and his assistants? Um, it, it is a bit of a change from, from Frank, but what has that been like for you and the other players in your opinion? Uh, no, it's been good. It's been easy. Uh, he has, you know, uh, he has a full-time translator anyway, so everything gets uh, repeated immediately. Um, you know, he's very, he's very clear um, on what he wants anyway. You know, he's very, uh, very animated, I guess you could say. He uses hands a lot and uh, directs players uh, very well. And, um, but yeah, that, that, you know, even video sessions, the translator's always there repeating exactly what he wants and he always makes sure we understand. So, um, but yeah, that's been an easy transition. And then just last one for me, what do you, do you like the new kit? Like, what is your honest opinion of it? <laughs> no, I like it. Um, you know, it's definitely different. That's, just, that's for sure. No more, uh, you know, all the five stripes going down, but, um, but no, I liked it uh, when I first saw it. And uh, obviously I haven't put it on yet or anything, so I haven't got to see myself in it, but uh, it looks good on the other guys that have already done it. So, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to wearing it. I mean, you like the all black. I mean, players love going all black. Yeah, but... all black's cool. All black's definitely cool. <laughs> You got to wear pink shoes or something so we can spot you on the field. We can <laughs> yeah, we got to separate separate the colors so you can see. You know, black boots probably won't be the one this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, one more for me, please. Uh, this is a, a delicate question, but I, I have to ask you this: the team has a history of shedding big contracts from players, uh, either waiving or trading or releasing or anything like that. You are, you know, rumored to have, a, you know, a good, well-earned contract. But were you at all afraid that the team was going to move on without you going into the season? What, going into this year? Yeah. Uh, no, not necessarily, no. I was, uh, you know, I obviously it was a difficult year last year uh, for the team and things like that. But, you know, I have, uh, you know, I have, I have confidence um, in what I can bring. Obviously, I haven't been here very long. It's only been, what, a year and a half. Um, so, you know, I was coming off uh, three years, basically, of not much football. So, um, you know, the last year was, uh, you know, a lot of football, but in difficult circumstances. Um, so I think, you know, with, with this change, uh, you know, obviously we got a new start this year, new manager, obviously new players coming in, things like that. And, yeah, I have to earn my spot, just like everyone else is trying to earn their spot. So, um, you know, that's the, that's the thing. It's, it's all hard work and just see where, see where I end up. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Do we have anything else for Emerson before I let him go? Yeah, I got one. Um, how much tactical work and work on the ball has been done in the past week compared to around the same time preseason last year? Has okay. there been more of an emphasis on conditioning under Heinze? So I didn't get that first bit. Yeah, how much tactical work or work on the ball has been done um, in the past week compared to around the same time last season? Yeah, I mean, that's that's most of what we've done We've is, uh, you know, we've done a lot of fitness uh, kind of linked in with tactical, a lot of groups kind of switching over, things like that. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've done an extremely uh, we've done a very big amount of work on tactical and fitness in a short space of time. Um, and I think everyone's learning very fast uh, at a very fast pace. Um, and that, that can only be good for us because, you know, I can see us, you know, couple weeks down the line, um, you know, being very clear and very understanding of what he wants and just growing from that. So um, it's definitely been a lot of work. And I think, you know, I don't want to compare it to, lot, you know, other years because he's a different, you know, he works differently compared to other people. Um, but all I can say is that uh, I think it's very good for us. All right, guys, we've got Eric here. Feel free to, to start with questions. Hey, Eric, um, not a lot of Atlanta Knight of fans have really met you or gotten to know you yet. Um, can you just talk about what what kind of player you are? What are your qualities um, and where what positions you're most comfortable playing? Dice que los hinchas de Atlanta a lo mejor no conocen mucho sobre ti o de dónde te gusta jugar en, en el campo. Si puedes decir un, un poco de ti y dónde te sientes más cómodo en, en el campo. Sí, sí. Primero, buenas tardes para todos. Eh, 
a mí me gusta jugar mucho de segundo delantero, atrás del 9, pero también me gusta jugar por las bandas. Eh, no tengo problema jugar como extremo ni como segundo delantero. First of all, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I like to play as a, a second striker, uh, so a little bit behind the number nine, but I also like to play on, on the wings, um, you know, as a winger, so I'm comfortable in, in each of those spots. Saludos, Eric. Eh, luego de un tiempo aquí en Atlanta, ¿qué se siente poder incorporarse con el primer equipo y qué diferencias has visto desde la llegada de Heinze? La verdad que, que muy lindo, la verdad, poder entrenar ya de igual manera con mi compañero, adaptarme así rápido fue algo, algo excelente, algo que, que no me costó la adaptación, por suerte, con, con la calidad de compañero que tenemos. Y nada, creo que con la llegada del, del profe Gense se siente un poco más los entrenamientos como en Sudamérica, un poco distinto. Eh, muchas cosas más como trabajos diferentes que, 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 que antes no se realizaban. My, well, it's been great to be able to train with the guys. My adaptation process to the club has been really smooth and I think, you know, that's thanks to the, the great teammates that we've had and, and they've treated me really well. So that process has been really easy. Um, and, you know, Heinze is a South American coach and we do some different things in training, some things that maybe we uh, were different than we've done in the past. Uh, Eric, last year you signed with the club, but you couldn't join Atlanta United because of MLS rules. Uh, so you, it's my understanding that you decided you would train with Atlanta United too. Can you just talk about that decision? Was it difficult? And what did you gain from just being in the country and being with the club uh, before you could actually play with the first team? Dice que el año pasado cuando llegaste pudiste entrenar pero sin jugar en los partidos. Pero desde tu, tu punto de vista, ¿qué, ¿qué ganaste con esa experiencia de, de estar aquí y, y poder adaptar al país y al club? Sí, así mismo. El año pasado llegué y estuve como dos, tres meses sin poder jugar. Y la verdad que me sirvió para poder adaptarme al país, para poder conseguir un lugar donde, donde vivir en conocer más la ciudad, los compañeros, y, y la verdad que, que fue, creo que fue un, una buena experiencia la de venir y no, no poder jugar, lastimosamente no, no podía porque las ganas de jugar estaban, pero por algo pasan las cosas y, y nada, la verdad que, la verdad que más, me, esos tres meses que estuve más o menos entrenando sin poder jugar, pude conocer la ciudad, los compañeros y me sirvió, me sirvió mucho. Yeah, I was here for two or three months last season with without the chance to play, but just being able to be here and train helped me adapt to the city, helped me adapt to, to the new team, finding a place to live. Um, so of course I had the, you know, the desire to play and that's always there, but uh, being able to train here was it definitely helped my, my adaptation and it, it served me well. Eric, eh, muchísimo gusto te habla Felipe Cárdenas con The Athletic. Eh, la pregunta es que háblame un poquito sobre la dinámica que, que se vive entre el grupo de los delanteros. O sea, está vos, está Lisandro, ha vuelto Joseph, está Cubo. O sea, ¿cómo ha sido eso? ¿Cómo ha sido la, la relación que tenés con los veteranos, Joseph y Lisandro? ¿Y, y cómo, cómo ves al grupo? Hola, ¿qué tal, Felipe? Un gusto. Eh, sí, la verdad que con Lisandro todavía no, no tuve ninguna charla porque acabo de llegar recién con Joseph, con Cubo tengo una buena relación la verdad que, 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 que bien o sea me llevo bien con los dos son buenas personas, buenos jugadores por sobre todo y nada, creo que, que va a haber mucha competencia este año pero, pero nada yo creo que el que esté mejor para jugar para ayudar al equipo va a jugar I haven't got a chance to speak much with Lisandro yet. He's gotten here recently, but I've talked to Joseph and Kubo. Um, we have a good relationship. They're good people. And I think there's going to be a lot of competition uh, among that group this year. Um, and, you know, who's ever in the best form is who's going to play. 
um, but we've, we've got that competition. Are you uh, working out mostly as a striker or on the wing? Uh, or is it just still too early to, to tell? ¿Dónde estás entrenando de momento? O si es demasiado para, para definir con una posición donde, donde vas a jugar. Y, y yo creo que por el momento estoy jugando de, de extremo. Estoy entrenando la mayoría del tiempo ahí. Pero como dije hace, hace rato, no tengo problema jugar ni de, delantero, delantero centro, ni detrás del 9, ni por fuera. No tengo problema en, de jugar en ninguna de esas tres posiciones. I've been training as a, as a winger, but as you said, it's early and I don't have any problem playing in, in any of those positions as a center forward, behind the striker, or on the wing. Emerson. Go ahead, Doug. Oh, thank you, Roberto. Uh, Emerson was talking about how he appreciates uh, Heinz's communication style. He's very direct, tells the players exactly what they want. Has he had that conversation with you yet? And is it making everything a little bit easier seeing he's a new coach as well as what he used to do? Sí, Emerson acaba de hablar y dijo que Heinz es, es muy directo en su comunicación con, con los jugadores. Si has tenido una charla así, con él y si estás de acuerdo en, en su forma de comunicar con, con el equipo. Sí, así mismo, así mismo es, es muy directo y la verdad que es bueno, es bueno eso, te transmite una seguridad, una confianza y, y también que, que está con nosotros y que va, va a hacer todo lo posible para que este año sea un, un año lleno de, de triunfos y, y ojalá de campeonatos. Yeah, he is like that. He's very direct. And as a player, it gives you that sense of security, that sense of confidence um, that he's transmitting to you. Um, so I think you know, that's good for us. And, and we're hoping that it's going to be a year full of good results and, um, and wins and hopefully championships. Hola, Eric. ¿Qué tal, Roberto Rojas de Bean Sports? Eh, quería preguntarte cómo sentís físicamente eh, después de jugar solamente un partido oficial hace tres meses. Y... ¿Cómo ha mejorado su juego desde que llegó eh, Gabriel Heinz? Así mismo, así mismo. Yo jugué después de varios meses. Yo llegué, pero antes de, de llegar acá ya, ya venía de un laxo de sin jugar por el tema de la pandemia. Creo que a todos los jugadores le pasó. Y venir y esperar tres meses más. Jugué el partido contra América, habré jugado después de casi seis, siete meses. Y la verdad que me noté con una falta de ritmo, pero es normal porque venía de un tiempo largo sin, sin poder jugar. Pero nada, ahora estoy recuperando el ritmo y me siento bien, me siento confiado y, y nada, también con la llegada del profe estamos, estoy aprendiendo muchas cosas más y creo que todos también y, y vamos a seguir mejorando, que eso es lo lindo de este deporte, que uno siempre va a mejorar esté en donde esté. When I arrived to the club, I hadn't played in like six or seven months, which you know was the, the case for a lot of players uh, because of the pandemic. And then I was training for three months, was able to play in the, the one match. And I, I noticed I was missing a little bit of rhythm, but I think it's normal from you know the time that I was away from, from playing in matches. But since the new coach has gotten here and I've been able to train, I'm feeling good, feeling like I'm getting my rhythm and I'm learning a lot of new things from the new coaching staff. Uh, and I think that, you know, I'm going to continue to do so and just try to improve. This Eddie, is the first, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Thank you, thank you. Um, Eddie, sobre, um, eh, ha dicho Heinze sobre la Liga de están a un mes prácticamente de jugar ese torneo contra la Juelense. Y es un torneo importantísimo, pero que siempre agarra los equipos de la MLS con poco ritmo. Digamos, gracias. Sí, así mismo. En, yo todavía no, no tengo, o sea, no, no sé mucho sobre ese torneo por mi reciente llegada, pero sí pude jugar el año pasado y con lo que se, está, con lo que se habló, que, que nosotros llegamos con menos falta de ritmo porque el, lo, los otros equipos ya están en competencia y nosotros todavía no arrancamos, pero. Pero nada, todo el, yo creo que vamos a ir por todo este año, no solamente por ese campeonato, sino por todos los campeonatos que nos toque jugar. 
I don't know a lot about the CONCACAF Champions League yet because I arrived recently, but I was able to play that one game. And, and I know that people talk about the fact that other, uh, you know, the other leagues are already in season and, and we're coming in maybe without some rhythm, but, um, you know, we're not only going for that competition this year. We want to do well in, in every competition that we're a part of. This is the first time we've been able to interview you uh, for various reasons. Uh, you know, as an up and coming uh, player, why did you choose to sign with Atlanta? Como un jugador joven, ¿por qué elegiste a Atlanta United? Porque veo mucha proyección en este equipo y me veo que que puedo hacer una muchas buenas temporadas y también puedo rendir al máximo y da que dar el salto a a otras ligas. Because I see a great projection with the club, uh, I think I'll be able to have good seasons here uh, and, and be a good player and then potentially be able to jump to another league. Eric, te tengo dos las últimas preguntas para mí. El, ¿Cómo describirías el fútbol que, que, quiere, que quiere el profesor? Lo que han estado entrenando en estas últimas semanas eh, y, y cómo te sentís al respecto. Sí, sí. Um, creo que un juego dinámico, un juego donde nosotros siempre tengamos la pelota, seamos agresivos y, y nada, creo que, que va a ser un, un lindo desafío porque, porque vamos a implementar cosas nuevas creo acá en, en, la, en la MLS con la llegada del profe y, y nada, en, la verdad que, que muy contento con los entrenamientos que estamos teniendo, nos va a ayudar muchísimo a crecer como jugadores y eso, eso es muy importante. The style that, that the coaching staff wants is, is a dynamic one where we're in control of the ball. Um, I, think, I think that we're going to learn a lot from the coaching staff and they're going to implement things, new things in MLS. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's just going to help the team and, and we're yeah, hopefully have a good season. Y la última para mí, Eric, como que la MLS se está presentando como una buena liga para el joven suramericano. Acá, acá siempre ha llegado suramericanos veteranos, experimentados, y pues en tu caso, en, el, en términos de jugadores paraguayos, han habido paraguayos también que han tenido mucho éxito. Miguel, por supuesto. En tu opinión, eh, o sea, recomendarías, yo sé que no has jugado una temporada, pero ya has vivido en el país, has entrenado, has visto cómo se mueve el deporte acá. ¿Lo recomendás? Eh, a, a tus compañeros de tu edad allá en Paraguay, en Olimpia, que vengan que traten esta, esta liga, este fútbol Sí, sí, 100% 100%, la verdad que la liga está creciendo y bastante rápido y también por la calidad de vida, por el país, por todo influye mucho eso, la tranquilidad que tiene uno al, al estar viviendo acá estar entrenando acá y la verdad que, que es muy bueno por eso tomé la decisión de venir acá y la verdad que no me arrepiento y, y la verdad que, que le recomendaría a mil chicos más si tienen la posibilidad de que vengan. Gracias. Yeah, yes, I would recommend the league to other players. Um, you know, it's a league that's growing a lot also for the, the quality of life, the country, um, the, the sense of calmness that you get from being here. Um, so I, I would definitely recommend it. Rick, yo tengo dos preguntas más por mi parte. Eh, personalmente para vos y, y tu familia, ¿cómo has encontrado la ciudad de Atlanta? ¿Cómo de, obviamente de hacer esa, esa marcha de Paraguay a los Estados Unidos es algo muy grande? ¿Pero cómo has sentido vos desde que llegaste en, en Atlanta el verano pasado? Sí, así mismo. La verdad que de Paraguay acá es un salto muy importante en Atlanta, Estados Unidos, un país de primer mundo. La verdad que que Atlanta, yo, yo vivo en Marieta y la verdad que es una ciudad muy tranquila, en, no me preocupo por nada, tengo todo cerca por suerte, pero muy linda la ciudad, salí a recorrer, a, a conocer, la verdad que, que muy linda, muy tranquila y, y creo que eso es importante, la tranquilidad que te transmite, que te transmite la ciudad es importante para, para uno estar tranquilo, para uno poder vivir bien, tranquilamente, después los entrenamientos, después los partidos. Yeah, well, coming from Paraguay to the U.S., it was a big, important jump for me. Um, you know, the U.S. is a yeah. first, world, first world country, and I live in Marietta, and it's very relaxed, very calm place. Um, 
beautiful place. I like to go out, walk around to get to know things, but it, it just transmits that, that, you know, feeling of calmness and, and allows a player to be relaxed off the field. Y la última parte, eh, ¿cuál será tu meta personal para vos? Obviamente hay muchas expectativas también por la selección paraguaya, obviamente viendo a los eliminatorios, la Copa América. ¿Cuál, cuál será uno, un meta personal para vos al final de la temporada? Claro, claro. Sí, la, una de las metas importantes sería tener, jugar muchos partidos en la, la mayor cantidad que puedas. Voy a trabajar para eso. También lograr títulos con, con Atlanta, que para mí es lo principal ahora. Y lo de la selección vendrá solo, si Dios quiere. O sea, soy muy joven todavía, tengo eso consciente. Pero nada, si se presenta la oportunidad, contentísimo y voy a tratar de aprovecharla. Pero, pero nada, lo primordial creo que ahora mismo es concentrarme acá, dar lo mejor de mí y si me toca ser llamado a la selección, Sería, sería un sueño cumplido también. Well, a personal goal of mine this season is to play as many games as, as I can, uh, to get as many minutes as I can, uh, and then to win titles with Atlanta United. I think the national team goals, that would come on its own, but right now I'm totally focused on, on Atlanta, concentrated in, in doing what I can well here, and if the national team opportunity comes, then I would definitely you know, it would be an honor and I would take advantage of it, but right now just totally focused on here. Did you have an opportunity to talk with um, either uh, Miguel or Tito about Atlanta United before you signed? Tuviste la, la oportunidad de hablar con Miguel Almirón o con Tito Villalba antes de llegar? En, no, personalmente no hablé con ellos pero sí a través de compañeros que compartieron, o sea, que, que jugaron con Miguel. En, Miguel les recomendaba muchas cosas que yo podía venir a hacer acá, como dónde quedarme y, y cosas así. Pero, pero a Miguel lo conozco, no, nunca tuve una charla personal con él, pero, pero así sabemos lo que representa Miguel, lo que es como jugador y lo que es como persona. No, I didn't speak directly with them, but I, I spoke to like former teammates of them a yeah. little bit about uh, kind of what, what to expect. But I know Miguel. I haven't had a chance to speak with him personally, but, um, you know, we all know what, what Miguel represents. We've got time for one more before we let him go. It, sure. can, you, can you provide uh, a specific example of something from training uh, that illustrates Hines' communication style, maybe something you didn't do correctly and he corrected you or you couldn't, didn't do as well as he wanted and, and he corrected you? Si, si puedes decir, si se, se te ocurrió algo en, en los entrenamientos, de un ejemplo de cuando, bueno, la comunicación de Heinz, que algo que te pidió que te salió mal y te corregiste o, o algo así. Sí. La verdad que con Gabriel lo bueno es que, que te dice que siempre te vas a equivocar, que uno, uno no, es, no es perfecto, que nadie sabe todo y que de los errores se aprenden y eso es, eso, es, eso es importante para la confianza de un jugador, de saber que vos puedes tomar una decisión, pero que te puede equivocar también. Entonces, entonces vos tenés más confianza de poder hacer un pase o hacer un, un dribbling o hacer co cosas así, entonces tranquilamente uno tiene en la mente que, que puede hacer cosas y que si te sale mal el técnico va a estar ahí para, para apoyarte He says as players you're, you're always going to make mistakes so but it's, it's those mistakes that you end up learning from, so if you have a, a pass or, or a dribbling you take somebody on and it, and it doesn't go well, um, you know, you're going to learn from those. And it's, um, as a coach, that's good to know. And it gives you confidence to know that you have a coach like that who's there and going to support you. All right, with that, we'll, we'll let Eric go. And thanks, everybody, for joining the call.